normally on a Sunday, the Deb's at work and I've basically got the day to myself so I can go steam rallying or car boot sale, I can work in the shop, I can go out with Mick and Stig, whatever I want. This weekend, Deb's been off work, so I've spent nearly all today in the garden with her, cutting hedges, mowing lawns, planting things, generally tidying up the garden. Um, basically, I'm laying a bit, of, a bit of groundwork because I want to go away to a steam rally next weekend uh, with Richard in the centre of steam wagon. So there's no stake this week because Mick's never come down because he didn't want to get roped in with a garden, I would imagine. Right, I'm all set up to do this, put this shrink fit together. First thing I want to do is cool off the pin. I've got an old carbon dioxide fairy extinguisher here. I'm going to put some carbon dioxide into this welding glove and that will basically form dry ice and it will cool the pin down. It's the heat that makes a difference expanding will cool the pin down. It does help a little bit. That's severely cooled in there now. the ice forming. Right, next thing is the heat. This needs to be hot but not gluing red hot just before dull red's probably enough for it. That's the one. That's got a got a hole there now. This is still nice and warm from the shrinking process. So I'm going to weld it now when it's hot and it'll see if I have to put too much amperage into it. I'm going to weld it with a, a stainless tool on the fellow wire, which is a, a fellow wire designed specifically for welding to similar metals. In this case, it's welding stainless to mild steel. I'm going to TIG weld it on straightforward DC. You know, as soon as they put the, the mask on, you're going to hit the mirrors. See how I've managed to leave the, the centre drill mark or the, the centre intact at the end of all without damaging it. And that's really not a bad weld for a mechanic that pisses about. See I've got some copper wire onto the welding table which I'm eventually going to make rotate with an electric motor. And the copper cable just makes sure you get a really good earth. Right now you can see I didn't want to damage the, the centre and that's running there within a couple of tenths at the most. 
if we run a, run a cut across this face, take that well off. I've actually got to take, I think it's a mil and a half off to get this down to 14.3. And we'll machine the other side when the crank's assembled, we'll take the point three off there, and that brings the crank webs down to 14. This weld material is quite tough, but it is machinable. John, you f***ing arsehole. Oh. oh, I feed the wrong way, didn't you, you f***ing idiot? Aye. I'm afraid we'll have to weld that up again. Right, I managed to pull myself out the brown stuff by running a, a run of that stainless wire around there. Um, these things happen. Just being careless really. It's, I suppose I'm trying to run cameras and run a lathe at the same time and talk at the same time. Anyway, it's not too bad when you're able to pull yourself out of the shade. Always see and make sure your power feed is going the right direction away from the job, not right up close to the chuck. As I was saying, this stuff machines quite nicely, it's quite a lot tougher than stainless, but it's certainly machinable. Right, that's it machine now. That's one little mark there, which isn't really going to make any difference. Just wants to rag in now. This is the piston rod, the crosshead, connecting rod in the big end of the steam engine. Before I can make the crank pin, it's a lot easier to bore the big end to size and make a pin to suit the bore. It's easier to make a pin suit a bore than it is make a bore suit a pin. What I need to make sure is that this bore is concentric with these two faces, or at least at 90 degrees to them. At the minute, I've got this packed up, so that's running level with a machine bed. And when I put a square on here, nothing square, everything's sort of lying around. It's different angles, not much, but nothing, nothing's reading true. If I measure these, they're 20 thou difference between that end and that end. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer. These are really nice tight fitting doll boards through there, and there's actually marks on there, a 1 1 a 0 0. But you can see how the bearing is actually overlapping the keep plate there, and it's the same on this end here. I put a square up against the side there. It's nearly square, but it's not. It's possibly got 10 or 15 thou in it. I don't know whether you can see that, but there is a, there's a gap at the top. There is a little bit of play in this crosshair bearing, back and forward, but there's no twist in it. It's, a, it's actually a good fitting bearing. So I think what I'm going to have to do is mount it, probably on those two faces, and then machine two flats on here, or it's machined them flat in parallel to each other so I can mount them on there to bore that bearing. So if that bearing there is not at 90 degrees to these two faces, it just won't work. I mean, a lot of this work on here has been done by hand, been done with a file, it's been done a long time ago. I've got the crosshead, which is this bit here clamped on these two 103 blocks which are nice and square like in it and that's all held down by the one clamp here all I want to do is make these two faces here parallel to the cross head so I've got somewhere to mount it do to bore that hole or to bore the big end
at the minute nothing sort of square everything's not lined up so there's a little bit of lift on that but there's no twist on it so what I'm going to do is measure how much lift there is split the difference and pack this up and then I can measure four points and see how far away it actually is I've decided to clamp it across the bar so it won't cause any twist and motion and I've got a reading now of exactly half I think it's reading 16 thou so now I've got, it, I've got this clamped down and it's exactly in the middle of the plane and the bearing You know, I would imagine it would be strong enough there just to put the boring tool through and bore it now. But I'm going to machine these two faces here parallel, then it means I can clamp it properly to do the bore. I mean, people say it's only a steam engine, but if these things aren't right, if they aren't parallel and true, it'll not work, it'll not run, it'll just bend up. I know because I've built steam engines before, and these things are critical. Right, so that's the setup. Crosshead's clamped onto two. Parallels. I've split the difference in the play in that bearing and that's clamped up there. Now I can machine these two faces flat, turn it over, clamp it onto those two faces and bore that hole. So you can see it's touching here, it's not touching there, which I won't wait to look, that's exactly how we're measuring this end higher than that end. We'll put five thou onto it. I'm just going to take off the barest minimum possible to make it flat. This will dress up nicely with a file now and I'll probably turn over and machine you that side as well and I've got, got it all square. We haven't affected the bearing area in any way. You don't have a long way, you've got to How long does it took us to do all that? <laughs> Bollocks, man! I think we just need to adjust it now so it's touching the, the bore all the way around and put a trail cut down through it. Oh dear me, jolly lad. 